Every once in a while, I have to refocus my frame as to why I've left the workplace to be my husband's helper and the keeper of our home. Unfortunately, even amongst Christian women, who often we would think to be supportive of homemaking, have made comments that I must be bored or what do you do all day since you don't have children. I want children, we just haven't been blessed with children yet. Usually I end up leaving the conversation feeling like I'm not doing enough or I'm not enough or I have to justify myself, which just throws me off and never ever feels good. And I share this not as a victim. I am not a victim. This is a reality of situations that happen and I know many of you will have had similar experiences. And a lot of you have shared that these type of situations happen quite often. Even after you have children, they still happen. I've gotten used to people that aren't of the Christian faith not understanding what I do all day, that doesn't really bother me. I find it's easy for me to hold space for them. They have a completely different worldview than we do and we're not trying to control them and I understand why we are very peculiar to them. That's why all my videos I'm talking to ladies of the Christian faith. You can watch these videos and not be a Christian and I'm thankful that you enjoy them. I've had many of you comment saying that you're not Christians but you watch and thank you. And at the same time, I always want to be honest on who I'm talking to. That way, if you're you're not a Christian, you're not going to be shocked or offended with what I say because you know the worldview that I'm coming from. I actually recently had someone who was very offended when I said that I look up to see if companies give their money to liberal causes and if they do I don't buy from them and she said that she's also a Christian and she actually supports those liberal causes and how dare I say that uh, as a Christian that I don't and I told her rather than be upset or offended with me, she could be grateful instead because now she can decide if she wants to keep watching me or not knowing exactly who I am, that I'm not hiding anything and if you don't like it, you don't have to consume or waste your time watching the stuff that I put out. So I'm always going to be honest about who I am on my channel and no one is forced to keep watching it. Back to confidence in being a homemaker and helpmeet, sometimes I am thrown for a loop and I do end up getting insecure or frustrated even when it's Christians that question what I do with my time rather than affirming or praising God that I am working at home and I am available and willing and wanting to help my husband in any way that I can. This is when I have a hard time because I have expectations that Christians should not only understand this but advocate for a wife to help her husband rather than going to work for someone else and to advocate for a wife being a keeper of her home, growing in skills of building a productive home economy rather than being a consumer of everything and paying for everyone else to do stuff for you while you go out and work at a job. Unfortunately, for many Christians and even conservative Christians, this is still not the normal. It's socially more acceptable for wives to come home when they have children, but it's still not celebrated at all. And it's definitely not socially acceptable for wives to come home before or without children. That is actually unheard of, even in Christian circles. But this is the biblical expectation. I will go into the value of a wife being home in another video here soon. With each of these situations that come up where I leave feeling lesser than because I'm not doing work that brings in a lot of money or have a job outside of the home. And notice I didn't say not making money. Sometimes people like to think that I'm condemning ladies who make money. I'm not doing that at all. I myself sell stuff online. I make a little bit of money from YouTube. I've never said women can't make money, but I have said making money is not my first priority. I think a wife making money can be a blessing, but the moment that it causes her to be stressed out and to lose self-control that is talked about in Titus 2 and to not be pure and to not be able to work at home, to not be kind, to not be able to be submissive to your own husband, to not be able to love your children or your husband. The moment money is prioritized over those things, it's no longer a blessing for a wife to be making money because she's not able to do it while also keeping those virtues that Titus 2 does talk about, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So making money is not a wife's first priority. The first priority is loving our husbands, loving our children, being keepers of the home, 
being virtuous and being able to make money is then an overflow of being a good steward of those things which Titus 2 clearly spells out. And Proverbs 31 always gets brought into this that she was a career woman. But if you notice, reading Proverbs 31, she was a hardworking woman, and she did make money. She did sell her linens, but all of that was from an overflow of her working out of her home. Her children, her husband, her home, none of those were neglected because it said she stewards her household. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband does also. It is her building her home economy first. And a lot of times when the priority is not helping your husband, is not loving your children, is not keeping your home, but the priority is making money, that's often where helping your husband, loving your children, and being a keeper of the home, those things end up being neglected. So it's about not neglecting those first things that Titus 2 very clearly talks about. And we are in a culture that will never normalize homemaking. So we have to stand on God's word, not what is socially acceptable, even if it means that you're the only person that you know in real life doing it. Praise God. Hopefully by your example, a younger lady will see that it can be done. You can be a full-time homemaker even before you're blessed with children. You can be home with your children, raising them in the way they should go, homeschooling them, having fun at home with them while building your home economy, while growing in skills of the home that's a blessing to your family. You can learn to be your husband's helpmeet, how to help him in daily life, uh, especially when we live in a popular culture that wants you to help anyone and everyone but your husband. Titus 2 verse 3, older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. And Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Again, this is all home economy stuff. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So I hope you're encouraged by this video that we are not to fear man, we aren't to fear what people think of us or even their assumptions of us just being home and thinking that we're bored all day at home because we don't have a job outside of the home. But we want to be the woman who fears the Lord. We don't even have to justify ourselves. It says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. God will vindicate us in our obedience to his ways and we can trust that he will be our vindicator over and over. Whenever I read the Psalms, I'm just reminded of how good of a vindicator God is. And Matthew 6 verse 6, God who sees you in secret will reward you openly. So I pray this video encourages you today and that it's a blessing to you. It's a blessing to be home. And even if you don't know anyone else who's doing it, you are being a pilgrim and a pioneer. And may God bring many young women around you that they can learn from your example. God bless you and the rest of your day.